Hi, I'm Sean Rasmussen and welcome to Learn How to Blog. Today we're looking at Google authorships and the actual Google authorship markup that shows up in the search engine rankings. So you know when someone is searching on Google and you see a listing and it's got a nice little picture next to it. That's the Google authorship showing up. And there are many benefits to go with that. One of the benefits is of course that it's easier to click on something that's got an image than something that's just text. It also seems to give you a bit of a search engine ranking boost. And I did a little test just to see how that worked. But before I share that test with you, let me run through with you why I reckon Google are implementing this author rank and these Google authorships to their listings. First of all, let's have a look at how Google makes their money. Well, first, someone surfs the internet and they're looking for information. That person is a user. They use Google. They search for something and if they find what they like in the search engine, they'll click on it. And if they have a good experience, they're happy and they'll keep using Google. Meanwhile, Google have got another type of person hanging around called an advertiser. And that advertiser advertise services, products, and so on. If the user clicks on an ad, for the advertiser, then Google makes money. Now I think we all know this, but the important part here is that Google has got no advertisers unless they have got lots of users. We are all users, some of us are also advertisers. But Google have to keep the user happy. If the user is happy, then they make money. The user needs to get the best possible information when they click on a result in Google search engine. If that doesn't happen, they're going to go elsewhere. So Google wants the best possible result at the top. Google want to get rid of spam listings, they want to get rid of spun content and spammy articles that are just there to trick the search engines. They want to get rid of listings that are not relevant and they want to get more authority towards the top. This is how Google makes 30 plus billion dollars a year. Now that we know that, what is a Google authorship? It's when you have your picture next to the listing of the article that you wrote or the page on your website. If you put your face and name to something, generally you do not want to be disgraced by it. You're not going to put spam next to your face. You're not going to associate yourself with something that you're not proud of. By having an authorship, Google can identify you, they can have a look at your reputation over time, they know instantly that it's very credible because they have got a record of you and your history of what you've published and they're going to give you a boost in the search engines over time because they know what your reputation is, they know what sort of traffic you used to get, they know what sort of rankings you used to get and they know what sort of feedback you get on social media with your social signals, your social proof and so on. So the benefits of a Google authorship is the branding, your face and name stays visible in the listings. That's really good because you stay recognizable. It's much more visible. It's easier to click on an image than it is to click on text. It makes sense. The image will draw you in. It's got a lot more credibility. Also your brand, your identity is protected. It's much easier for Google to know it's you than someone else using the same name and the same image. You're going to get more social signals because of it, which is going to help you. It's going to help your brand. It's going to help your search engine optimization as well. So I decided to do an experiment. I simply left out the code that you put into the article that proves to Google that I am the author of that article. It's called a rel author tag. I left that out of one article and I left it in another one. And this is what happened. Today it is four days after I published this article, giving advice on your blog. I searched for it in Google and it came up number four. Can you see how the listings with the images next to them are much more likely to get clicked on? Whereas the text ones look a bit boring. Now here's the articles that I published a few days before that. This article was called Essential Elements of a Great Blog Post. 
I searched that on Google and because I had left out the rel author tag, it came up at number 18. Yet between actually doing this test, which was yesterday and today of making this video, I dropped the rel author tag back into that article and it jumped from number 18 up to number two overnight. So this article, essential elements of a great blog post without the rel author tag was ranked at number 18 on Google. As soon as I proved to Google that it actually was by an accredited author with a Google authorship, it jumped from number 18 to number two. Now you can take that proof any way you like. And I know what it looks like to me. And I'm keeping my Google authorship. If we go back to the home page of Learn How to Blog and have a look, here are the very two articles that I published, giving advice on your blog and essential elements of a great blog post. Both of them got a similar amount of social signals. Both of them are published on the same blog. Both of them are optimized in the same way on the page. So I've formatted them similar. Everything is done the same, yet they ranked number four and number 18. And as soon as I added in the proof to Google that this was a Google author, this article jumped from number 18 to number two. And that makes a fair difference in traffic that you get from the organic listings. Now let's have a look at how you actually establish your Google authorship and get the markup into the listings so that you can show up as a Google author as well. First of all, you need a Google Plus profile. I recommend you use your Gmail address for this if you can. Otherwise, keep the same email for everything you do with Google if it's possible, because there is an advantage. Everything is tied back through your email, your Google Plus profile, your YouTube account, Google AdSense, Google AdWords, Google Places for Business. Everything is tied together through Google and it carries an advantage for you because they then know what you're up to and that's a good thing providing that you're an honest person. Go to your Google Plus profile, locate the About tab in your profile. So you simply go to Google Plus and click Profile. After that, you go and click on About. On the About page, you locate your contact information and click Edit down the bottom. Then you simply add an email address as such and drop it in here. Now that should be a personalized email at the very domain that you want to have the authorship associated with. You can have as many sites as you like, but you just need to have an email address at that site. There are other ways of doing this. This is the one that I think is the most straightforward. Let's say that I've got a site called travelupon.com and I would simply type in Sean at travelupon.com and then I will scroll down and click save. After that, you will need to verify your email address. Of course, what that means is that you need to actually have that email address in place. The easiest way to set that up if you've got a WordPress blog is to use cPanel. The next step is still under your profile and the About tab in Google+. You go to the Links section and look for the Contributor To area. This is where you put in the sites that you actually contribute to and write articles for. This could actually be a site that you do guest articles for. You click Edit and then you add custom link. You type in the name of the site and the URL. And then you select whether you're a current contributor or a past contributor. Well, obviously you would be current. And then you scroll down and save that. The next step is to go to your blog post. 
And this will be the very article that you want to attribute to your authorship. In this case, why not pick the one that I'm talking about right now? How Google Authorship Markup benefits you. So now I will scroll down to the bottom of the very article. And in that article, I will select the text version. And at the very bottom, I paste in my rel author tag. Now this very tag that I'm using here is the code that will allow you to add me on Google+. Let me show you. At the very bottom of this blog post that we're on right now, you can see there's a box that says, I'm on Google+, add to circles. And that's where people can add me to their Google Plus circles. In that very box, I've also got my rel author tag that allows Google to see that I am the author of that article and that will attribute that to me. And that code, by the way, is in this very article. So where it says get your own rel author tag, that code is here. So you can just simply copy that code and all you need to do is change the ID itself to your Google Plus ID. And if you want that ID and want to find out what your Google Plus numbers are, then simply click the link below that code in the article and that will take you to your Google Plus profile and it will show you what that code is. Now let's go to the top. Let's grab this headline and copy that one and I will go to Google and let me search. And if we have a look, there it is. As you can see, that is the very Google authorship markup that I was looking for. Now the last thing to do to check that your authorship is working is to simply use the Google Structured Data Tool. And you can find that link in this very article. Let me locate it for you. Down towards the bottom, you will find this image, Structured Data Testing Tool, and there is the link there. It will take you through. This is the one Simply take the URL from the article, providing that you actually have posted the article, so it's published, and then click Preview. Now it will show you that it all works. Of course, we just looked in the Google listings and saw it was there, but that's because my authorship is already set up. This is the last part where you can test and make sure that it works. So that's it. It actually is a very straightforward process. Now, when I first implemented my Google Authorship markup, I noticed that it actually took a few hours before it worked for me. So have patience if it doesn't show up straight away and you're confident that you've followed all the instructions correctly, then just sleep on it. You might find that it shows up the next day. Go and read the article. Please leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. If you're watching this on YouTube or anywhere else, please comment below this video. I'm Sean Rasmussen from Learn at a Blog. Thank you very much for watching. Live life, have fun, and enjoy.